Oh, poor Blue Origin. They really can't catch a break. Its suborbital rocket had just failed shortly after launch in Texas on Monday morning, a huge setback for the Amazon founder's wider ambitions of sending humans into orbit. And what's more, comparing this to how utterly insane of an achievement SpaceX's 150 consecutively successful launches has been, while simultaneously going from 0 to 117 booster reuses, it really does put salt on the wound. Anyway, what exactly happened with the Blue Origin New Shepard flight? And how did the FAA react to this explosion? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Blue Origin's New Shepard suffered its first launch failure on Monday, when the main engine on the New Shepard booster appeared to cut out about a minute after liftoff from West Texas. Luckily, the crew capsule, which carried NASA-funded experiments, but no people, safely landed under parachutes after firing an abort motor to escape the stricken booster. Blue Origin's live webcast showed the rocket lifting off from the company's sprawling 80,000-acre launch facility north of Van Horn, Texas, around 10.26 a.m. EDT after a nearly hour-long delay. A single hydrogen-fueled BE-3 engine powered the 60-foot-tall or 80-meter booster off the launch pad. After a minute after liftoff, as the rocket neared supersonic speed, the plume from the BE-3 engine appeared to change color and shape. Then the power plant appeared to shut down, causing the rocket to tilt off its plant trajectory at an altitude of around 28,000 feet, or 8,500 meters. The solid-fueled abort motor on the bottom of the crew capsule fired immediately, delivering an instant pulse of 70,000 pounds of thrust to push the craft away from the failing rocket. The four-ton capsule spun around and tumbled after the abort motor's brief firing, which propelled the vehicle hundreds of feet away from the new Shepard rocket. Guided by reaction control system thrusters, the capsule's motion stabilized as it deployed three drogue parachutes and three main chutes for a relatively gentle ride back to the ground. The capsule was designed to touch down at a speed of around 3 miles per hour or 5 kilometers per hour. It appears we have experienced an anomaly on today's flight, said Erica Wagner, Blue Origin's payload sales director and host of the company's launch webcast on Monday. This was unplanned and we don't have any details yet, but our crew capsule was able to escape successfully. The unplanned in-flight abort saved the company's reusable capsule and the mission's experiment payloads stowed inside. But one of Blue Origin's two operational suborbital New Shepard boosters, which hosted its own research payloads, was lost in the launch failure. The craft fired soft landing thrusters and touched down on the desert floor in West Texas about five and a half minutes after liftoff. This was the ninth flight of this booster, which is one half of the launch system that also includes a capsule. The emergency escape system performed as intended, rapidly pulling the spacecraft away from an exploding rocket. Had a crew been on board this flight, they would have experienced a significant jolt and some high gravitational forces before landing safely in the West Texas desert. The FAA is definitely not happy about this incident. The blunder has now drawn the attention of the Federal Aviation Administration, which has issued an official statement announcing an investigation of the mishap. The investigation isn't unusual, but given that the company has used the same platform to launch a number of high-profile celebrities, the scrutiny is likely to draw unwanted attention. The anomaly that occurred triggered the capsule escape system, the FAA said in a statement. The capsule landed safely and the booster impacted within the designated hazard area. No injuries or public property damage have been reported. This was a payload-only mission. There were no humans aboard, the FAA said. Before the new Shepard vehicle can return to flight, the FAA will determine whether any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap affected public safety. This is standard practice for all mishap investigations. Blue Origin originally hoped to launch the mission NS-23, named for being the 23rd New Shepard flight, on August 31st and then September 1st, but bad weather conditions prevented the liftoff on both days. 
The NS-23 mission wasn't carrying any space tourists aloft today. Instead, it was a cargo-only flight that aimed to take 36 payloads on a brief jaunt to suborbital space and back, 18 of them funded by NASA. How the payloads fared during the anomaly is still unclear. But this will certainly be a step backward for Blue Origin, as the New Shepard is the only rocket the company has completed in more than 20 years. Meanwhile, its biggest rival, SpaceX, has just completed its 52nd successful Falcon 9 launch in 52 weeks, sustaining an average cadence of one launch per week for a full 12 months. Simultaneously, the Starlink 4-2 rideshare mission set a new record for Falcon 9 booster reuse, marking SpaceX's 150th consecutively successful launch and was one of the most complex commercial launches it has ever performed. Falcon 9 lifted off on schedule with a combined 12-ton or around 26,500 pounds of payload safely secured inside its composite payload fairing at 9.20 p.m. EDT or 1.20 UTC on Saturday, September 10th, tasked with lifting the rocket's expendable upper stage, recovering fairing, and payload most of the way out of Earth's atmosphere was Falcon 9 Booster's B-1058, a nine-engine first stage that debuted by launching two NASA astronauts in May of 2020. 28 months later, B-1058 lifted off with Starlink 4-2 and Blue Walker 3 on its 14th spaceflight, an orbital class launch, breaking Falcon 9's booster reuse record. The rocket performed no differently than it had every time previously, burning for a bit less than three minutes before deploying the upper stage and returning to Earth. About nine minutes after liftoff, B-1058 safely touched down on drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, or the ASOG, likely setting the booster up to break its own record before the end of 2022. With 13 launches already under their belts, boosters B-1051 and B-1060 will likely follow B-1058 past the same 14 flight milestone in the near future. Once free from the booster, Falcon 9's expendable upper stage kicked off SpaceX's most complex commercial launch ever. Measuring about six minutes long, the first and longest burn brought the second stage and payload into an elliptical orbit a few hundred kilometers above Earth's surface. A second burn followed about 45 minutes after liftoff, raising the low end of that ellipse to deploy Blue Walker 3 into a circular orbit around 500 kilometers or 310 miles. Once free of its rideshare payload, the focus shifted to Starlink. In theory, SpaceX could have taken the easy way out and significantly simplified the mission by deploying all 34 satellites at the same altitude as Blue Walker 3, allowing them to reach their operational 540-kilometer or 336-mile orbits in days instead of months. Instead, SpaceX pursued an exceptionally complex mission requiring five burns from Falcon 9's upper stage. The last thing we'd like to mention is that Starlink 4-2 was SpaceX's 42nd launch of 2022. If the company continues its average cadence over the remaining three months, it could end 2022 having completed more than 60 Falcon launches in one calendar year. In short, Jeff Bezos seems to be running out of time to save Blue Origin. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality content. And for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.